What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to talk about the revenge of the low wage worker. There's a lot to unpack here. But also, I want to let you know that you can go ahead and subscribe to my new The Corporate Game channel where I'm gonna teach you how to set up a corporation. There's a lot that's gonna be happening. Links below. So, right now, Many businesses that need low wage workers are struggling. And this is what's really funny. I feel that this is going to be the, I'm going to do a completely separate video, but this is the worst Christmas on record, which means that a lot of people don't have money. But these businesses are struggling to get workers. They're really struggling. And I, I'm, I'm like, part of me is we're going through a huge social shift, going through a big social shift. The America that I grew up in doesn't exist anymore. It used to be you get a job, you do a good job, you, you go to work, you were proud. That, that's gone. That is gone. Because right now, I have a friend who runs a restaurant and she was just venting about what she's going through. Because one of the things that happens is they used to fire you if you didn't show up and you didn't call in. And she like had a situation where she had three workers, no call, no show. Then the next day, they just showed up. And she's like, I wanted to fire them, but it's so hard to get people. I want you to think about that. You don't call, you don't show up. It's just like, I'm gonna take me a mental health day and you still got your job. This is the revenge of the low wage worker. They are clowning. They're doing whatever they wanna do. Cause she was telling me, she was like, it's very, very frustrating is like, She's actually thinking about exiting the restaurant business, but she's like, who could I sell this to? No one's gonna buy a restaurant during this mess. And she's kind of stuck at the moment. So this is some other stuff that is happening with the low wage worker. One of the things that is a, I'm seeing like frequently on my next door, the credit card machine is down and you have to pay cash, right? And people are finding that the receipts that they give are not the receipts of the stuff that they ordered because the workers are taking the cash and putting the cash in their pocket. Now, this kind of dovetails into the rise in crime. This is this is something that's going to go on. And this is going to be something that's going to bring on automation like crack because right now this is going on across America. Low wage workers have figured out some stuff. No one is really watching them and they can do what they want to do. So I saw this on next door like 15 times. So this is a common practice. Oh, the credit card machine is down. You need to pay me cash. And they're giving themselves a generous tip. They are breaking themselves off a nice piece of the American pie. Now, years and years ago, this wouldn't have happened. People were not so quick to steal because essentially this is what they're doing but they feel because they're stealing from a nameless, faceless corporation that it's okay. But here's the problem, and I'm about to make a confession here. I talked about it a long time ago in my videos, but I embarked in some white collar crime. I did a little credit card fraud and I got away with it and I felt bad. And one of the reasons I did it a few times and then I stopped, I didn't do it anymore because I'm afraid of going to jail. And that's typically what happens when you commit these credit card crimes and stuff. And 
Now, these people, like I said in my other video, the prison pipeline. Uh, if they get caught, they're not going to do any hard time. So there is no prison deterrent because there's going to be so many of them. There's going to be such a large group of non-violent criminals. I mean, I am just sitting, I'm observing, I'm waiting, I am looking what is happening, and honestly, I'm kind of scared. I'm a little scared because once we, once this filters down to the prison, the criminal population, because see, this is one of the things that the criminal um, segment of society has going for it is a very robust um, communication system. So once it filters down that, hey, I can work at Taco Bell and then I could say the credit card machines down and let's say I put $300 in my pocket for the night. That's more money than they're gonna be making working three or four jobs. Now at some point, the restaurant's gonna realize the deficiency. They're like, we've ordered X amount of food, we're selling X amount of food, but the profits, the money isn't adding up. There's something wrong. So they're go this is gonna bring in a form of automation. This is gonna bring in some, some checks and balances. But right now, it's a party. It's a party. They're doing whatever they wanna do. They're getting away with it because there's no one minding the store. And once again, I just look at this. Um, I'm in a situation where I have to hire someone to help me and I've got a few ads up and it's not looking good. It's not looking good. So I've got to rethink some business decisions because trying to get people to work in a non-sexy, non-glamorous, non-high paying job is really, really hard right now. It's really, really hard. And this is more of the revenge of the low wage worker because the low wage worker is like the pretty girl at the prom right now. It's like whatever they want. Amazon, Amazon, which I think is the second largest employer after Walmart. I'm not sure about that. Don't hold me to that. I'm just assuming is running commercials saying that we're paying $15 an hour across the nation and in higher in higher cost of living areas, they're paying more. They're running these commercials and they're talking about all the benefits because Amazon has, I actually know someone that worked at the Amazon warehouse and uh, they said it was intense. You know, years and years ago, I used to work for UPS and FedEx. And I remember one summer, I was working for FedEx. I lost 30 pounds in a month because that's how hard I was working. So I can only imagine what they're dealing with now because the job hasn't changed. But who applies for the job has changed. And I don't know if these people are going to work that hard or if they work that hard. I don't know if they're gonna do it for a long time. I don't know. I don't think so. So what, how does this shape America going forward? Like I was watching some robotics uh, videos. This is going to push, because right now there are multiple companies that are creating automation for restaurants, for transportation, for everything. There's multitude of companies and the first company that can get a usable, viable product to market, they're gonna make billions. They're gonna make billions. And all of these low wage, not highly skilled jobs that people don't want, let's just be 100% clear, they don't want these jobs. They don't wanna do them, they don't wanna work them. Uh, they wanna be a YouTuber, they wanna be a TikToker, or they wanna be an Instagram influencer. 
That's what they want to do because those are sexy, glamorous jobs or careers. I mean, I could say I've been a YouTuber for 12 years and honestly, that is the longest that I've ever done any type of career. I have a 12 year YouTube career, 12 years. So in some regards, YouTube is a viable career. It is. And I'm getting ready to reframe, reformat and redo my whole YouTube platform. So I'm getting ready to redo everything because this is a viable career path. It really is. And there are many, many people who want to do YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, and I'm seeing them, but here's the thing. The top 10% of YouTubers, Instagrammers, TikTokers make 90% of the money. And once again, like I have a video that hasn't dropped on the corporate game, but it will be dropping that will talk about certain aspects of that. But what this is doing is casting the die for the future to be very, very automated because we've had this pandemic situation two years and the culture of America has devolved in two years. Like I said, in my last video, um, talking about the uh, homosexuals. Um, I don't think that John, who's married to Susan, and they have two children and they have a house and a mortgage, I don't think John is quitting his job. I don't think so. And I don't think Susan is quitting her job. But the number of homosexuals who are quitting their jobs, who are living with parents, living with some, uh, someone other than a relative. This is going to spur an era of innovation like we have never seen before. You're going to see like, once again, all day I've been watching robotic videos, I've been watching automation videos, and there is a robot that has human facial features right now. Her name, they call it Emeka, A-M-E-C-A, I believe. Very, very lifelike. And in this five-year period, we're going to see a stunning era of innovation. We're going to see a stunning level of automation. And we're going to see a stunning level of tech. And in each one of those segments, these people are gonna become billionaires. This probably for these highly skilled, because once again, this isn't gonna be Bobby on the corner who's gonna be behind this innovation. It's gonna be the people who are at MIT. It's gonna be the people at Cal. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the highly educated people in these think tanks, in these labs that are gonna be doing this stuff that's going to create an amazing situation of innovation because they have to. So you're going to see some stunning developments. You're going to see some stunning improvements of products and services because the years and years ago, Google came out with this uh, AI that can answer a phone. And if you've ever noticed when you call your credit card company, it's an automated attendant. And sometimes, like it used to be, you would talk to it and you would hear this because it was thinking. Now you don't even hear that. It is seamless. And what's gonna happen is these automated attendants for you know customer service are gonna get smarter. You're actually going to think that you're talking to a live person. You, this, this is how good this stuff is going to be. You're actually going to be talking to a computer, a robot, and you're going to think that you're talking to a real person. You will not be able to tell the difference between a real person and this automation. 
And once they get it to the point where they can bring it to the fast food restaurants, because this is where um, the lack of personnel is high. Like the high end food chains where these people like a waiter at Hal's, which is this high end steakhouse around here, make 70, 100,000 a year, a waiter. So they're not having the supply worker shortage that say a corner bakery or a Chick-fil-A. Yes, even Chick-fil-A is having trouble hiring people. Uh, McDonald's is having trouble hiring people. So as long as we have this situation, once again, this is temporary. I know it seems like it's forever because we're going through it, but it's temporary. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing bad lasts forever. Nothing good lasts forever. So we're in a temporary cycle where that's going to produce permanent change. It's a temporary situation that's going to produce permanent change. I'm going to tell you why. Let's say it costs a company $50,000, let's say $75,000 between salary and benefits to hire a person to answer the phone and to be a problem solver for their customers' needs. $75,000. And they have to take weekends off. What you're going to see in the future is 24-7 customer service. You're going to be able to call your credit card company 24 hours a day seven days a week, rain, summer, whatever, and you're gonna be able to get the exact service that you require because they're gonna have these automated attendants. Because these automated attendants, they don't have to take days off. They don't have to sleep. So this is going to be an era of innovation because I'm getting ready to start diving into technical journals and robotic journals and stuff because once they can get a robot with full articulation, you know, moving your hand like this, I know that it seems simple because you can just, they can do it, but to get a piece of robotics to do all the things that your hand can do is pretty complicated. It's pretty hard. And I feel in the next five years, they're gonna get there where they're gonna have automation, where they're gonna have a robotic hand that's gonna have the full articulation, the full range of motion of a human hand. And when that happens, game over. Because they're gonna attach this hand to a fully articulated arm, and they're gonna have a robotic body that can lift, move, and do things. And let's say this robot costs $50,000. They will get their money back within the first six months. You wanna know why? Because the robot doesn't have to have days off. So this robot's gonna be able to work in that warehouse seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So instead of having a human shift, uh, shift one, shift two, and shift three of humans, they're gonna have one collection of robots to do these things. And it's gonna be able to work and except when it needs to be charged up, that's the only time it's gonna not be working. We're about to see an amazing, you know, part of me is excited because I like stuff like this. And part of me is sad because this is going to kill millions of jobs, millions of jobs. When they can come up with an automated attendant to work in McDonald's, and they may set it up where you may just see the top half and it'll have a human face and human emotions. You know, but I really feel that what's gonna happen with McDonald's is you're gonna hit a kiosk, you're gonna key in your order and your food's gonna slide out of the tray. That's what I think is gonna happen with McDonald's, Arby's, Burger King. You know, there'll be some, there'll be two humans per restaurant. And these would be the people to run the automation. So a typical, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly, when I walk into a Burger King, I would see eight to 12 people. And those eight to 12 people would go down to two because of automation, or maybe even one. So right now, if you are a low wage worker, have your fun, because this is a temporary situation. This isn't going to go on forever. This is a very temporary situation. And once these jobs that you don't want, that you're turning your nose up at, 
they're going to disappear. They're not going to be there. And then this is when we're going to see, I, you know, I, I'm just sitting here spitballing, right? But what I feel is going to happen is, and this is going to be a separate video, but I feel this is going to push in a level of socialism because going back, referencing Jordan Peterson, we already have a large segment of society that we don't have jobs for. We don't have a use for. And I'm not saying that these people are worthless because I already have my worthless people video. The worthless people are the folks who are committing crimes, who serial killers, these people who will just harm someone just because they have an inclination. Those are the worthless people. What I'm talking about, this group of people who doesn't don't have the intellectual capacity to work certain jobs, we've got probably 30 to 50 million people that we don't have jobs for. We don't have jobs for. There's nothing for them to do. And that number of people is going to exponentially grow once this wave of tech and automation comes in. Because I am really waiting to see when the fully autonomous driving vehicles hit the road. I feel that once they hit the road, the first few or two is gonna be a little bumpy. There's gonna be accidents and stuff. And then once they get that workout, it's gonna be on and popping. And if you are a low wage worker, you need to evaluate your situation in the food chain. Because like right now, you are the prom queen. You can go anywhere and get a job. You can act a fool. You can not show up. You can not show up. Like my friend, she, she was like, I was so mad, but when they came in, I had to greet them with a smile on my face because at the moment they're in charge. The inmates are in charge of the asylum. And you know, and they were just like, hey, hey. And then they just been working for the last two weeks and this hasn't happened again. But you know, America's changing. It's just changing. And one of the things is I referenced in the um, hom homosexual video is these people don't understand what they're doing. If you are a low wage worker, chances are the social economic system, the social economic level that you're born into is the same one you're going to die in statistically. People don't move from low economic status to middle. They just don't. They just don't. So typically, if you're a low wage worker working a low wage job and you're not working, you're not killing yourself. I mean, literally killing yourself to learn new skills, valuable. You you're going to be in trouble. I remember years and years ago, we had um, a secretary. I used to work in the ER. And her name was Mary, Merry Christmas. And that was her real name. And she was the secretary and she was in charge of admitting patients and doing charts and stuff. And this woman had three kids and she was going to nursing school full time. And I remember one time she was in the break room and she had put her head down on the table and she was asleep. And I gently shook her and I said, are you okay? She said, oh yeah, I just need to rest my eyes for a little bit, thank you. And she went back to work. She was literally killing herself to get nursing skills so she can level up for herself and her three kids. And when she graduated, they promptly hired her. And you know, Scott's right at the time had a really good policy. Like if you already worked there and you went to school and you came in for allied health, they would pay you more than they would pay someone off the streets. So she went in with a, like a $5 per hour pay increase because she had been already working there. And I saw her life literally transform. If you're not in the, the business of creating a new life for yourself through education, learning new skills, it's gonna be really rough for you because once all of these low wage jobs start disappearing due to automation, and it's not a matter of if they're gonna disappear, it's a matter of when they're gonna disappear. Um, what are you gonna do? What are you going to do?
because one of the things that I am seeing, and this is why the crime wave is going to be stupid. I think it's the crime wave is going to be stupid. And I saw some people in the comments that were talking about, um, you know, it's different by state to state because I know in the state of Georgia, if I had went out and saw someone breaking my window and they walked away, I could not shoot them. I'm very clear on that. But if they came after me, then I could shoot them. But typically these kind of criminals don't carry guns and they're pretty much are going to run away as soon as someone show up. So there is no way for me to use lethal force on these people at the moment. But I feel, and hopefully I'm wrong, that crime is going to be so bad because look, right now, just check your next door, just check your news articles and see how many of these low wage workers are stealing money from restaurants. Saying the credit card machine doesn't work, you have to pay cash and putting the money in their pocket. That's pretty bold and brazen. You wanna know why? Because there's cameras all up in there. There's cameras all up in there. Unless they turn the cameras off. I don't know. I've never worked in a restaurant. I don't know what it's like to be a server. When I was in high school, I used to work in the metal fabrication factory. You know, we, it was called Sign Builders, and we made the signs for Arby's, McDonald's. We had all the equipment. That was my first job. So I never actually worked fast food. I have no clue to what that's like. But in the future, many ki kids will not know what it's like to work. 20, 30 years from now, kids will not be working fast food because it's all going to be automated. It's going to all be 100% automated. 30 years, that much I am sure. Of. And one of the things that we're going to see with this automation, <clears throat> and like I said, <clears throat> I'm going to do a whole complete separate video on this. Is this going to bring in, I think in the next 10 years, we're going to see UBI, universal basic income, because we have so many people who have nothing to do. They're just here. They have nothing to do. They're not educating themselves. They're not building anything. They're not, they're, they're just existing. And what's going to happen. And I don't think they're going to do the universal basic income because they care about people. They're going to start throwing crumbs at these people to keep the crime wave down. That's the only reason that they're going to do it. They're not going to do it to help people. Forget all that. It's going to be a countermeasure to tamp down the crime to, you know, there, there'll be all kinds of programs and stuff, but the future, depending on if you're a producer or a consumer, if you're a producer, the future is going to be amazingly bright. If you're a consumer and you're only a consumer, eh, it just kind of depends on what social economic level you, you, you're on. It could be pretty, pretty bad. And, you know, I forget the name of the movie, but um, God, I don't think his name, you know, essentially you guys will know the name of the movie. I think it's called Elysium or Solium. And it was like the bad line, the bad lands were planet Earth and all of the wealthy people lived in a satellite station where they had this amazing medical technology like anything that was wrong with you they would put you in this medical suite in the automation if there wasn't a doctor in there it was a hundred percent computer ran and generated and they would fix you and the, the story opened with them fixing a kid and it ended with them fixing a kid I actually see something like that in the future. I don't think that people are going to leave planet Earth. I just think that there's going to be certain areas of the planet that are going to be super luxurious, super high tech, super wealthy, and there's going to be the badlands. And this is where the lower social economic strata are going to reside. They're going to reside in the badlands. Think Mad Max. It's, you know, because, um, this is where we're heading. I don't know when we're getting there, but this is where this is where we're heading. This is where we're going. This is where we're going to end up. And 30 years from now, I will be 85 years old. And it's going to be a completely different world than it is right now. It's going to be a completely different planet. It's going to be a 
completely different situation. It's going to be a completely different world. And like I said, right now, if you're a low wage worker, enjoy yourself because this is your time. You can shine. You can act. You can do what you want, but it is temporary. This is not going to last forever because right now, like I said, there's a multitude of phone, uh, firms and companies and startups working on solutions for the corporate companies. They're working hard on these solutions. So it's just it's just time, you know, and what I feel in 2022, we're going to see some crazy stuff, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the corporate game where I teach you how to start a corporation the correct way. And also there's going to be new training and stuff that's going to start in the new year. Like once again, it's the holidays. It's Christmas. Christmas is around the corner. I am not fighting with that this year. I've, I've tried it for like 12 years and every time it's the same. People want to be off. They want to enjoy their families. They want to have, eat good, drink good, hang out with friends, do their things. Hey, Merry Christmas. God bless you. I hope you have a good time. But I'll be still here working. I'll still be producing content, observations, giving you my insights where I think we're going. And a shout out to the retired police officer that said I was 100% correct. And that's why he retired. Like once again, this crime wave is going to be nasty. And for the petty nonviolent crime, that's just going to be a nuisance. But the violent crime, that's going to be really, really awful. Really, really awful. So this is Glendon Cameron. That's all I got for you folks. I will see you in the next one.